Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back to Celebrating Act 2 and one of our favorite guests, John Mariani, the virtual gourmet. How you doing, John? Hey, very well. It's a beautiful day here in Tuckahoe, New York. A beautiful autumn day. And uh, my grandson and I made pumpkin pie from pumpkins in my garden. Hmm. Really? And I got to tell you, he's a pretty good little chef. It, it's delicious. But the question arises, not for him, <laughs> for me. We want to serve it as a dessert at uh, dinner. Mm -hmm. What's a nice wine to go with uh, the autumn flavor of a dinner? Well, um, you remember we talked about autumn foods uh, not too long ago. And... Yeah. Um, we glanced at uh, the kind of wines you can drink and to look forward to. But, yeah, um, let's face it, you can drink white wines in December and red wines in July. But there's, I think there's a greater variety of wines and other wines um, that go with autumn and winter foods than in the middle of, of summer. And uh, pumpkin pie is a good uh, – I'm glad you brought it up because, first of all, it's a dessert. Um, people don't often serve wines with dessert. Uh, not as they once did, but um, they can be delicious with some rubrics. You got any rubrics lying around? Go, got, got to get rubrics. Um, <laughs> the thing is that pumpkin pie especially is, is full of spices, cinnamon and nutmeg and allspice and so forth. So that's going to knock out just about any wine except one that has a similar, if not the same, types of flavors and has some spice to it. And this is when Gewürztraminer, Gewürz, I won't even attempt to spell the whole thing, but it begins with G-E-W-U-R-Z, Gewürz. If you go to your wine store, just say, I need a good Gewürz. <clears throat> Gewürztraminers are made in Germany, they're made in Austria, they are made in uh, Alsace, there's a wide variety, and they really, uh, you, you drink them, and they have a lot of spice all of their own. Nothing is added, it's not a flavored wine, but they would go very well with pumpkin pie. Um, what you don't want is a dry, bland white wine like a Chardonnay or Pinot Grigio or a dry uh, red wine uh, to go with a dessert like that or any dessert, frankly. Well, I, I'll take that back about dry white wines with cheeses, but if you serve them as, as desserts. But um, desserts are usually very, very sweet, chocolate desserts and pumpkin desserts and so forth. So you have to have a very sweet wine to compensate. So you could buy a very, very expensive French Sauterne, uh, which are intensely sweet, or a very, yes. very expensive German Trockenbernauschlesen, which we're talking about hundreds of dollars for some of these. Um, but frankly, uh, the, uh, the, the spices again and the chocolate are going to knock even those out. So I would go down a few rungs, certainly in price and prestige. Uh, because there are a lot of very, very uh, well-priced sweet wines. And I don't mean icky sweet, you know what I mean? Boone's Apple Farm type sweet. Uh, so you can get <laughs> Ferns and Barsack for $50, $60, and they are delicious wines. Um, I also love port with dessert. Um, yes. Again, I have to get a vintage port that's going to cost you $100 or more. So you get a tawny port, a ruby port, which is even lighter. Um, any of those types of ports uh, are going to be delicious. A, um, uh, a muscat, muscat has a lot of flavor. Muscat grape wines go with dessert. So there really is a whole big deal range. Madeiras are, are terrific. Have some Madeira, Madeira. Um, Marsala is good, another sweet fortified wine. Yeah. Uh, and then afterwards, you can have a, a good tot of uh, cognac or, um, or, or rum or, or scotch or something um, afterwards or even with it. Yeah. And and I I think of when I think of a autumn meal, I always think of things like pumpkin pie first. I always think of somehow a dessert or something. And in other words, it's not just a, a Thanksgiving and it's turkey. You know, it's not just a meatloaf and it's something or other. I always think for some reason, I don't know why, it, I always think of a in the fall of a a smorgasbord of food, a, a kind of a feast like meal even though they're not all peace so that's great advice the the uh, we do uh take to, to kind of look at the dessert 
yeah, I mean, in, let's face it, in the summer, a feast might be a pig roast like I'm, I have for my birthday each year in August. Yes. Um, or, or you could have a barbecue or put a good steak. But generally, people are not eating three and four course meals and, and cheeses and so forth right. during the summer. But at, um, you're right. I mean, I think you, you have you have any number of feasts you can celebrate, uh, ranging from the uh, release of Beaujolais Nouveau to Halloween. Right to Columbus Day, have a big Italian feast, and then, of course, comes Thanksgiving and uh, Christmas following um, uh, on that. So, yeah, you open yourself to all sorts of possibilities for wines. Uh, I do yeah, want to make a, a, a suggestion uh, for John uh, Coleman, for your grandson, uh, is that now we're in my wheelhouse, that, uh, that you might suggest uh, a white grape seltzer uh, from Kroger <laughs> Ralph's. <laughs> Uh, or your Welch's favorite grape store. grape juice, yeah. Yeah, no, 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 not grape juice, uh, grape seltzer. Oh, pardon. P pardon. Flavored white grape seltzer, I would say, would be just the right uh, thing yeah, and for he, your grandson. Yeah, and he does love that sparkly stuff, I got to tell you. <laughs> Good. <laughs> John, great advice. Thank you. And now I can plow through till uh, January 1st and enjoy every meal with a nice wine. Certainly can. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.